Hey there guys, welcome back to the CEO Life. Today my name is Wes Biko as usual and today guys we're talking about a bit of fragrance community drama. This is some drama that was going down in one of the fragrance groups this week. So I'm not doing a review, not a top five, but I wanna share with you quickly my scent of the day. It's this stuff right here, Axe Signature Gold. This is Dark Vanilla and Oud Wood, so to Toilette. This is lovely stuff, go pick this up guys. Has its own spray, it's literally a cologne. Imported this from India, well worth the money and go check out my review on that. Now into today's stuff. This all started regarding a post that was made in the Fragrance Guru Nation Facebook page. So this guy posted and kind of started attacking reviewers who do reviews, positive reviews that is, of clone houses and kind of accused Alexandria and Dua, their owners of both Massam and uh, Hani respectively, that they pay reviewers to do good reviews of their stuff. For me personally, I've had this happen in the past where people will accuse me of being paid by Alexandria or being paid by Dua. On a couple videos, people have told me they're gonna unsubscribe and that they're uh, that I'm an Alexandria or Dua shill, which is the farthest from the truth. So that's why I wanted to make a video about this because to address that side of stuff, and secondly, talk about my perspective from a reviewer and where I think the ethics are in terms of clone houses and where this hate from Ale for Alexandria and Dua stems from and why it's there. Just, you know, let's talk about it. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope it's uh, informative, but let's get into it. I started out on this Facebook post, as I said, and it caused a lot of outrage. We got 400 comments going on there. And finally the commenting got shut off, but there was people, big fragrance, uh, people from the fragrance community got in there. We got James from J Royal. We got Steven from Red Adolescence. We got Brooklyn fragrance lover, Carlos. Shout out to you guys. Love your videos. And we even got the owners of Dua and of course Alexandria chiming in there defending themselves. And it turned into this massive shit fest, let's be honest here. There's a lot of name calling, a lot of people going back and forth and it's kind of sad to see. It's kind of sad to see the fragrance community get into that state over something like a clone house. Now, when it comes to clone houses, what do I think ethically um, the ethics are surrounding that? Are clone houses bad? Are they doing something unethical? Are they cheating artists, the, the artistry side of perfumery out of it? I don't think so. Reason being, as an example, we got our moth here. Our moth Club de Nuit Intense Man. This smells like Aventus mixed with Lemon Pledge. This is a great scent. I love this. this is my workout version of Aventus when I don't want to use my actual Aventus. People don't have too much hate about our moth. As a house, people are like, oh yeah, our moth's great. You know, go pick up Club de Nuit Intense Man. That has been said on numerous videos. People don't have a problem with it. But for some reason, Alexandria and Dua doing the same thing. People have a problem with it. Are Dua and Alexandria doing anything unethical? I would say no, and the reason being is because they're not taking, say, for instance, with Alexandria, they got Interplay. This smells like Mason Francis Kurjong's uh, Baccarat Rouge 540. They're not taking this, bottling it in a Mason Francis Kurjong bottle, and then selling it as kind of a knockoff version of it. That would be 100% unethical. What they're doing is they're creating their own fragrance, this is their own kind of inspired expression of it. And yeah, well, it is close to the original, and they do say it's inspired by that, they're not selling it as the exact same thing. And that's where I think that kind of ethical line comes into play. As well too, even cloning a fragrance, that has its own artistry aspect to it. A lot of people go to this one kind of uh, thought experiment here with this is, so let's say you have Pablo Picasso, right? You could buy either his painting or you could get a print. There's a major difference between the two. And they use that as an example for clone houses, how you're not supporting the artist. The biggest difference that I'd say with that is take Creed, for example, okay? Let's go with Aventus and say as a safe estimate, they're selling 700,000 bottles of Aventus every single year, okay? And they're selling them for 400 a pop. Stores are, of course, making a profit off of that. Uh, but at the end of the day, they're producing a lot of fragrances. And then that's not taking into account flacones or let's just say that one of their standard bottles. These are getting sold at retail stores all across the world. People seem to think that comparing that to artists is the same thing. With an artist, you're dealing with one single painting, a singular painting. It's not like it's something multiple people can own. And I would understand, you know, you kind of taking a print versus supporting the real artist. Yeah, I totally get that and how you're kind of taking money away from the artist. But at the end of the day, when you're dealing with a massive quantity of bottles, especially if it's from a designer house, I don't see the issue in it. I really don't because you're producing something that costs half as much that I can go purchase. And if I'm an individual who say loves fragrances, but I wanna purchase, you know, say Mason Francis Kurjons Baccarat Rouge, but I can't get it. It's, it's an expensive fragrance. For me to get the 50 ml of that here in Canada, go buy retail, it's around five, $600 that I'm paying for a single bottle. That's hella expensive, guys. Whereas I can go to Alexandria, 
pick up their clone of it for 100 bucks Canadian and I'm set. The biggest thing with that is that's opening up the door to so many, for so many other people to explore these different fragrances and get a chance to try fragrances they've never heard of or never ever come across. And that's where I think clone houses are incredibly useful and incredibly valuable to the fragrance community. I know for me, they've exposed me to many other different fragrances or fragrance notes that I love. And on top of that, it saved me a lot of money, which I have no problem doing. You know, as a consumer, I think you have a right to go shop for the best price. For instance, you go buy a vehicle, say you go to, you know, Sal's used car lot versus buying straight from Ford, for instance, as an example here, you're gonna pay more at the dealership versus going to some used car lot. As a consumer, you have a right to spend your money where you want to. And I know for most people, they wanna save money and spending $500 on a fragrance, that's half a paycheck for some people, okay? Some people are making a thousand bucks every week. You know, that's half a paycheck, that's a crazy amount. I'm looking at it more from the side of as a, as a consumer here and somebody who enjoys fragrances. I don't wanna go out and pay a bunch of money for the actual bottle and if I can get something for cheaper and it's just a fragrance I love to wear, yeah, of course I'd love to support the brand, which I do with some fragrances. For instance, Creed Viking here. I have Scarlet Warrior, which is from Dua, which is a very nice fragrance. They're pretty much the exact same fragrance, but I do support both of them, right? I go out and support Creed. The other example though with this, where clone houses are a great asset to the community, I feel, a lot of the times they add to the original fragrance. For instance, Fantastic from Alexandria, which I love. One of my favorite scents. The original Tom Ford fucking fabulous. It's nice, but it just doesn't have that pop that I liked. Whereas Alexandria, they went and improved on it, made it a lot stronger, a bit more heavy, and it smells great. Or even too, with a lot of fragrances, they add projection, they add longevity, they add hours and hours and hours, a noticeable difference that you're paying for. And as a consumer, why would you not go for the better product? You know, if you have two different things, a great example of this was peanut butter that they brought up in the fragrance group, was if you have peanut butter, are you gonna go for the guy who originally made peanut butter versus say the great value brand? You know, at the end of the day, you wanna save money and it doesn't make sense to go buy something that's cost prohibitive when you can get a cheaper version of it. Now on the last part of this guys, reviewers and ethics of reviewers. I think reviewers on YouTube 100% gotta be honest with their viewers of if they are paid or doing any paid stuff and I think they gotta give 100% kind of free, free market in a sense to different houses. They're not just gonna support one house. Um, say for instance, you know, somebody just supporting Dua. I don't think they should do that. I think they should support, of course, all different houses and go try different things and not be just locked to one. Of course, that does come down to personal preference. Some people like certain houses. For instance, for me, I'm not a fan of Hermes. I'm not a huge fan of Hermes as a house. But in terms of reviewers, I feel the other thing too is with me having dealt with Massam and Hani on not just a consumer level, but also from a YouTube reviewer level, I've never been offered a, pro a you know, paid endorsement from them. For me, I have never been paid to do a Alexandria or Dua promotion. Most of my stuff that I have from them, specifically Dua, um, I paid for all these bottles. I enjoy Dua, I think they're a nice house, and I do like it because I can get fragrances that are either hard to find or extremely expensive uh, for a lower cost, and it's great. For instance, here with Alexandria, I have a bunch of their bottles. Here's some of my stuff from Alexandria. I love Alexandria as a house. I've been sent a couple bottles for review, uh, but other than that, I pay for most of my Alexandria fragrances. And even with that, the ones that I'm getting sent for review are ones that are just pre-release fragrances a couple weeks before they come out so I can do a video on them, talk about them. I do enjoy Alexandria, I do enjoy Dua. I think they're both great in their own right. Um, as I've said, yeah, I've got a couple free bottles for review. But other than that, I'm, that doesn't influence my review. That doesn't make, I'm not getting paid by them to go and hype up their products. And I think I speak for most YouTube reviewers that they're not gonna do that as well. That violates YouTube's terms of services. We have to notify people if it is a paid product placement or paid endorsement. And I feel like most YouTubers aren't willing to compromise their channel just to support one fragrance from say Alexandria or Dua, whatever that is. I don't understand where that hate or people assuming that you're paid just because you support a fragrance house stems from. You don't see that with Saramoff or with Creed, but you see that with Alexandria and Dua. And it's kind of sad to see because in their own right, they're both incredible fragrance houses that produce amazing artistic fragrances. They have stuff that's their original blend stuff too. Uh, for instance, with Dua, I love this. This is their Melange Massou. I love this stuff, smells like champagne. It's just very regal, I love it. And you know, even Alexandria, they produce a lot of their own stuff as well. I tried a lot of their stuff and I love it. And there is that artistic side that still goes into it. You have to look at too, the size of them. 
right? So Alexandria, they're not gonna be doing the same number of volume that say Creed is doing every year. And I think that's the other big thing. They're not affecting Creed in some negative way. It'd be different if you're going after say some really small random niche house that you've never heard of that sells say 200 bottles a year and you go as Alexandria Dua, go and create that and sell, you know, seven, 800, 800 bottles of that um, at, you know, around the same cost. That's where it's a little different and I feel like you're kind of taking food out of the artist's mouth. But in general, copying houses like Rojo Dove, Rojo Parfums, um, you know, Creed, I don't think that's a big issue, or even designer fragrances. There's so many that are sold, guys, and at the end of the day, in the fragrance community, we should just want people to enjoy fragrances and love fragrances the way we do. That's all I want, you know? If if I have a friend who says, hey, I wanna go try Creed Viking, but I can't afford $500 for it, I'll go, hey, go try Alexandria, go try Dua, you know? Whatever that fragrance is. Because at the end of the day, we should just want people to be into fragrances. I like fragrances. I think they're great and I think everybody should wear them. You know, I think it's great to smell great. In closing, the owners of both companies are very, very respectful and I don't think they're the type of people who would try to get people to give a good review and pay them for that. At the end of the day, they have a couple thousand people in each group who support them heavily and love their stuff. I think that's enough of uh, good reviews as there is. So there you go guys, that's my take on it. Let me know what you guys think below and uh, yeah, do you guys a part of that? What's your take on it? Do you think clone houses are unethical? Uh, do you think YouTube reviewers are unethical? And you know, what's your take on it guys? Thank you for watching and take care.